I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi everyone, it's Teacher Joanna. Happy Sunday and Merry Early Christmas and um, I hope you are all doing really well and staying safe at home with your families and I am really thankful that we still get to connect and see each other through uh, different ways online just like last week's fellowship. Um, I'm just really glad that we get to see each other, hear about what we've all um, been up to, and I know that there's many more opportunities to come, so uh, excited for those. And I also wanted to open us up in a word of prayer before today's Sunday service, so if everyone can close your eyes, bow your heads, uh, put your hands together, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time uh, during Advent that we get to come together as a church to worship you. We want to remember your love and your faithfulness for us uh, that was greatly shown through the birth of Christ um, as well as the life and death of your Son. Uh, and we... Uh, want to also pray that you be glorified through our praying and our singing and our listening of your word today. Open our hearts and our ears to really receive and listen attentively to the message of the birth of Jesus and the great joy that it brings for us all. Would you fill Pastor Ecker with the Holy Spirit to really preach your word powerfully today um and we thank you again and we love you in Jesus' name we pray amen have a great service everyone and i hope to see you all soon bye merry christmas everyone uh, one thing that i'm thankful for this year is uh, just to be able to still communicate with each other, call each other, text each other, uh, still be part of the community even in this pandemic. Hey guys, Merry Christmas. One thing that I'm very thankful for this Christmas is still being able to have community even though we are not able to meet in person every Sunday. Hey guys, Teacher Joseph here. One thing I'm thankful for is starting deals with some of the teachers. And one thing that I learned during COVID is community is very important. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you guys in 2021. Bye. Merry Christmas, everybody. One thing I'm thankful for is for the internet where we can still communicate with you guys, uh, but doing it safely. Hey, Primary and Junior fam, and welcome to another day of Sunday worship. And yeah, as you guys can see, I have my holiday sweater on. Um, just, you know, bring some some festivity to the mood. Uh, but yeah, um, you know, it's Christmas is almost upon us, and the holiday season is already here. But let us not forget uh, what the meaning of Christmas is, how God came down in the form of a small tiny helpless baby but this baby was going to do great things right in fact he did the greatest thing which was to save humanity from 
uh, our sins, right? To give us eternal life and salvation. So today, let's just give praise and thanks back to God for doing this and to find joy in Him during this dark season. I know it's uh, very confusing for a lot of us uh, during this time when we can't see the friends or families that we used to see usually around Christmas. But, you know, let's just continue to place our faith in God and trust in Him as well. All right? So the first song that we will sing together today is Hark the Herald. And uh, in one voice, and in one heart, let's uh, let's sing it. <clears throat> heart, heart, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. So the second song we'll be singing today is Oh Holy Night. Very famous song, some of you guys might know it. So if you do, of course, sing along with your, uh, if your family is there, sing along with your kids as well. Okay. <clears throat>
that, it concludes our worship session for today. Um, next time we'll see you guys. It will, Christmas will be, will already be passed, but just, yeah, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays with your family. Uh, all the blessings towards you guys uh, this year. And hopefully within the upcoming year, we can grow closer with God and trust more as well. Okay, take care guys. Bye. Hey guys, it's Teacher Katie. Um, I wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas as well as share the one thing that I'm thankful for this COVID and Christmas season. Um, I'm really thankful for our City on a Hill Yongnak community. I'm thankful that um, all of you guys are here watching every Sunday as well as uh, reaching out to your teachers. And I'm so thankful for the pastors and just everyone around at church who is able to just, you know, talk to each other and see how each other's doing and catch up, even though we can't see each other face to face. I hope you all stay safe and well, and uh, Merry Christmas once again. Hey guys, Merry Christmas. Uh, one thing that I'm really thankful for uh, this season is definitely the community that we have uh, here at Yongna. Uh, I'm so thankful uh, specifically for uh, my fellow teachers as well as you know Pastor Edgar and the rest of the staff uh, because they've just been serving so faithfully to us uh, during this pandemic and this hard time. Merry Christmas, guys. One thing that I learned during this pandemic is that there is always something to be grateful for. Hi everyone, Merry Christmas to everyone here who's listening uh, and to their families as well. One thing I'd like to say that I'm thankful for this Christmas is probably still being able to attend church even though it is through virtual means, not um, physically being together, but yeah, you know, we're still able to gather together in worship to celebrate our Savior who came down um, and died for our sins and rose up again so that we may be able to share an internal life with God. Hey everyone, hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe. I uh, just wanted to say Merry Christmas and um, two things that I'm thankful for. The first one is for having food on the table every day. And uh, the second one is for the church community. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good Christmas and uh, enjoy the sermon. Hi, primary and junior family. Uh, hope you, everyone is just excited about Christmas. I know we are in a pandemic and sometimes it could be hard to be excited and merry and joyful about it, especially if we can't see our friends or be a, you know, or be out and about and all those things um, and see the family, the extended family that uh, we would like to see. But uh, as we look at today's passage, I just hope and, and my prayer is that we can find something merry to be about, you know, to be merry about or to be joyful and thankful about. And uh, before we get into it, let's just start with a word of prayer and then we'll go into the passage and the rest of the sermon today. So let's put our hands together. Let's put, let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that uh, he is the reason that we can be merry, that we can be joyful and thankful. And help us today to just be able to see that. What, what, what it meant for Christ to come and, and what type of God you are to us and the amazing gift you have given us and as well as just um, the amazing opportunity that you have given us as well to share this amazing message. And so Lord, as we go into today's sermon, open up our hearts and our minds to understand and to follow. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to go to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. It's a little long, but I think we're all familiar with this story and this event that happened. And uh, But hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see some new things from this today. So Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, it says, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place 
while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem and the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly ho of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen them, uh, seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And this is God's word for us today. We are now in the fourth and final week of Advent, and I hope everyone will have a Merry Christmas. And uh, even in the midst of pandemic, we might wonder what is there to be merry about? Uh, what is there to be joyful and thankful about? Being in lockdown, not being able to go to school in, in person every day. And if we do go to school uh, in person to live in danger or tension of being infected and then passing that on to our family or other people, not seeing friends and family outside of your household, and the list of reasons not to be merry and joyful and thankful can go on. Well, I want to tell you that, that today that we can be merry and joyful and thankful because our God is a God who saves and the God of the little people, all right? So our God is a God who saves, and he's the God of the little people. When we look at the Christmas event, a lot of time, a lot of the times we focus on the miraculous virgin birth of Jesus, uh, which is, of course, great. And if you don't know what virgin means, just ask your parents. Uh, but a lot of the times we forget to see the power and planning of God to bring huge empires and cosmic events for the purposes of his little people. And what do I mean by little people? Uh, do I actually mean shorter people or children? Well, yes, of course, God is the God of shorter people and children, uh, and he's the God of everyone, but that's not exactly what I mean when I say the God is the God of little people. In order to find out what I mean by little people, well, we will need to explore the passage and see what it has to say and, and how this passage has brought me to that conclusion that God is the God of little people. And once we find out, I hope we can find a reason to be merry, joyful and thankful and get others to be the same. In verses one to five, the passage talks about the time Mary was pregnant with baby Jesus. The Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus announced that everyone needed to be registered for a census. Every person traveled to the town where uh, his family was from. Since Joseph was a descendant of David, uh, of King David, he and Mary left Nazareth and traveled to Bethlehem, the city of David. This part of the passage may just, you know, feel like it's sharing information, but it's screaming. It's actually screaming that God is a God of the little people. And this can uh, give us something to be merry and joyful and thankful about. So first of all, according to Micah 5.2, the Savior will come 
out of Bethlehem. You guys can read it. Micah 5.2. It says that. And if Joseph and Mary had it their way, Jesus was going to be born in Nazareth. Because that's where they were living. They were, Jesus was going to be born in Nazareth if, if Joseph and Mary had their way. So would this... Uh, be in line with the prophecy in Micah 5 2 that the Messiah will come from Bethlehem? No, it wouldn't. Uh, it would have been bad. Uh, and, and so when we look at this event, what's, what, what does God do and plan so that Jesus is born in Bethlehem and not in Nazareth? What does God plan and do? Well, he plants it in the emperor of Rome's heart to have a census and survey which would make everyone go back to their home, to town, to register, which forces Joseph, who is from, again, Bethlehem, to go back to Bethlehem with his entire family to register. God is moving an entire empire so that this small family that no one knows about, these little people, can go to Bethlehem so Jesus can be born and fulfill what is said in Micah 5, 2. And let me tell you, God moves presidents, prime ministers, nations, and even this pandemic so that we can either know Christ or be more like Christ. He does it for the little people. So he does it for what do I mean by little people? What, what, what do I mean partially by little, little people? Unimportant people, like you and I. We're not famous, famous. <laughs> you know, and even, you know, sometimes I wish I was. Sometimes, you know, I'm glad that I'm not. And we're, we're just unknown people, a lot of us. So let's be, you know, and, and God does this for the little people. He does these huge events. He even moved a star, all right, to, to guide the wise men uh, to where Jesus was. He moved cosmic events, all these big things, just for this seemingly unknown family. And let me tell you, God does it, not only during that time, but he does it for his people all the time. So let's be merry and thankful that God is using things that we might not even know about for our good, to either know Christ or be more like Christ. This alone should force you to think of one thing you can be merry and, and about and thankful about. It makes me think about how God used a university in Korea as a staging ground to bring my mom to Christ, and then later for me and my family uh, to come to Christ. Amazing. That's why it was so important to ask your parents, how did they become Christian if they are? Or to ask your friends or your guardians. Because God moved big things in their lives so that these little people can be moved to know Christ and, be, and to be made like Christ. And God is moving us today by using big things. In verses 6 to 7, it says, while they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. Mary and Joseph looked for a safe place for Mary to have her baby. But every place was full because of all the people who were in town to be counted. So Mary and Joseph found a place where animals were kept. And that is where Mary and her baby uh, ha had her baby, Jesus. Uh, she wrapped him snugly in cloth and she laid him in, f in a feeding trough, okay, a manger where the animals ate their food. And that's what is said in, in verses six to seven. Uh, and you might think, if God can move empires and cosmic powers like the star uh, and plan all these things and events, he could have at least given Jesus and his family a hotel or motel room in Bethlehem to stay in, <laughs> all right? He could have, God could have at least given Jesus that uh, instead of, you know, having all the rooms full uh, when he was born and, and, and to be born in a stable or some some scholars say Jesus was actually born in a cave um, where they kept animals. Uh, and you would think Jesus should have been or could have been 
born to a wealthy family, but instead he was born to a carpenter. He could have had a thousand angels following his every beck and call, but instead Jesus was born humble, poor, and human. He was born a little person. He became little for us. Jesus, the God of the universe and King of all, became small and human and was born in a manger, a manger, a feeding trough filled with germs and animal spit and saliva and who knows what. Why? Why did Jesus come like this? No room in Bethlehem, in a stable or a cave, in a trough, poor. That's not a king's welcome. That's not, a, that's not God's welcome. That shouldn't be a welcoming for, for even a decent human being, um, and let alone God's welcoming. Why? Well, in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, Paul writes, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, through, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. All right, through his suffering, we might benefit from. Jesus and God planned Jesus to go through all of that poverty and poorness and suffering. He did it for us. He did it for those little people, the poor, the sinful, the nobodies, the unimportant. He needed to become poor and suffer even before he went on the cross. All so that we can have salvation in God. That's amazing. God became little in order to reach his little people. That's what he did. He became one of us. That's amazing. So that we can one day be saved and be with him. And that's something to be merry and thankful about. Now in verses 8 to 20, it talks about how uh, in the same region, some shepherds were staying out in the fields and watching their sheep to protect them from thieves and predators. All of a sudden, the angel of the Lord stood before them. A bright light shone around the shepherds and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I have very good news for you. Today, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord was born for you in the city of David. There's three titles that they give Jesus here. And you know they're talking about God. And then the angel said, You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. A king in a feeding trough. That was no place for a king. All of a sudden, a whole army of angels appeared, praising God and saying, God, glory to God in the highest. Heaven and peace on earth to uh, people uh, he favors, the little people. So the shepherds went straight to Bethlehem to find baby Jesus and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby and they were lying there in the trough. The shepherds went and told others about Jesus. Everyone who heard about Jesus was surprised and amazed. Mary thought about all these things and then she treasured them within them and the shepherds returned to the fields, praising God because everything that had happened, just as the angel had said. You know, the birth of Jesus Christ, it's great news, it's good news, it's amazing news. Uh, Jesus was not an ordinary baby. Uh, he is God's son sent to earth from heaven. Jesus came into the world to save people from sin and to be our king. And he did it by becoming little for his little people. and. You would think the arrival of the king of the universe and God of all will bring all the kings and queens and wealthy and important people to come visit. But the first to be called to witness this a miraculous birth, uh, this event of, of, of baby Jesus coming into this world and, and being there were, guess who? Shepherds. Yeah, the leader of the wise men came, but shepherds. They were considered unclean. And outcasts, they were considered little people of little importance and little of value. 
Yet God brought them first. God is for the little people, the ones that feel that they are not good enough. Humble, poor, sad, and non-important sinners. You can imagine these shepherds to be big burly men who probably swore a lot, made crass jokes, did and said inappropriate things, were dirty and sore forth. Uh, but he decided to give this amazing message to them first. And they came. And after witnessing uh, the angels and Jesus, they were the first people to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the first evangelists, the first people to share the good news. And that is amazing. And when we see these, this passage, we need to take comfort that God watches out for us, moves again, cosmic and big events for us, for his little people. He became little for us, all right? And also God calls and gives the message first to the little people, the shepherds. And guess what? Today, we're not, not all of us are, not, all of us listening are probably not shepherds, but God is calling us to do the same. As the shepherds went out, so we must too. We have this amazing news. There's something to be merry and thankful about that God has come to save and God is for the little people. This is amazing news. And we need to be able to share it. And we need to be able to be little for others. As Jesus became little for us, he became human. We need to as well, when we look at others, not to speak down to them, but to speak across to them, to meet them where they are and you know that and one amazing way to do that is just hopefully after the pandemic is over invite your friends to church just be like hey just come and just meet them where they are I, I, you know that there's a great message that we want to share and we also want to have some fun and come or maybe even to share um a service video and get them to think what do they think and hopefully it's not too boring or anything, anything like that but to make them think to share this message um yeah and to talk about jesus and just meet them where they are um wherever wherever they are so therefore from this sermon uh, i hope when someone asks you what is there to be merry about what is there to be thankful about in this Christmas time during the midst of the pandemic? You can say, well, I have a God that looks out for me and he moves mountains. He moves big events for me without even me knowing it. For, for me to know Christ and for me to, to be like Christ, he does this. Second, he, God became human for me. He, he became fully man and fully God. He, of course, he was fully God, but he's being fully man as well. He did that for me so that he could be poor, so that I can later be saved and be rich in salvation. And then finally, he was able to share this message with me through either my parents or my friends. And I want to do the same with those around me. Those could be your three reasons to be merry, joyful, and thankful during this Christmas. So I hope we can all learn that today. And Merry Christmas. Moving on to some announcements. Um, on Christmas Day, it's just gonna be a joint worship with everyone. And uh, on Christmas Day, it'll be online, uh, unfortunately, but we can still be merry and thankful, right? Uh, second announcement is that uh, Awana, for those who are, do attend Awana, we are will be on break until January 13th. So we'll start up again January 13th. Uh, so this week, there's no Awana. Same with next week, and I think the week after as well. So January 13th, there will be Awana, and we'll start again. Uh, so I hope everyone has uh, a great Christmas, a Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll 
uh, move on to closing prayer. Hey guys, hope you guys had an amazing service and learned a lot about Christmas through Pastor Edgar today. And I just want to end us off in prayer. So let's close our hands and let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for being with us and keeping us resilient and strong throughout this pandemic. I know it's been very hard for us and there are still a lot of uncertainty but we have you a sovereign God that is always for us and never against us and so may we continue to trust in you and continue to just live out the Christian life that you uh, already set for us and yeah just keep on being resilient, Lord. And as Christmas is approaching re really soon, in a few days, I just pray that we would be able to take a deep breath and just remember the true meaning of Christmas where you sent your son down to earth humbly in a manger and, and just sacrificed your only son for us Lord and we would just love to thank you so much for showing us sinners the greatest love that anyone can ever experience and even though we don't deserve it you still gave us this mercy and grace and just that alone just let us just dwell in that during this Christmas and pray that we may be able to still be joyful and have yeah have joyful hearts as we spend Christmas with our families uh, and even though we might not be able to spend it with all of our family and friends. I pray that we may still be able to reach out to them online and just spread the good news of what happened and what happened on Christmas. And yeah, I pray that we may continue to always remember what you've done for us. And always be joyful, no matter how hard the situation might be. And so, I'd like to pray this in your precious name. Amen. Hope you guys have an amazing Christmas with family. And I'll see you guys soon. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.